In this video, I want to show you how M plus handles multi-group confirmatory factor analysis. Multi-group confirmatory factor analysis is often used to compare factor structures across different populations, for example, across different cultures or across treatment and control groups. And specifically, we often use it to, first of all, test whether we have measurement equivalence across different groups, meaning invariant loadings, invariant intercepts, and potentially invariant error variances, so that we can be sure that our factor-related parameters can be meaningfully compared across groups. For example, we want to be sure that we can meaningfully compare latent variable means across groups, and for that to be the case, we have to have group invariant factor loadings and group invariant intercepts. And so here I want to show you what MPLAS does by default when you run a multi-group factor model. In this case, I have a factor model with two factors and I have two indicators for each factor. So it's a very simple um, confirmatory factor analysis model. I have F1, the first factor that is measured here by Y1 and Y2. And I have a factor F2 that is measured by the indicators Y3 and Y4. You can see that in the variable statement up here, I also have a variable G that is my grouping variable. And whenever you run a multi-group confirmatory factor analysis or multi-group structural equation model in M+, you need to have a grouping variable in your data set. And so in this case, this is the variable G. And then the grouping statement here tells M+, based on which variable we should distinguish the groups that we want to compare. So that's the variable G. And also this statement serves to provide labels for the different groups. So in this case, this variable G has a value 1 that indicates con control group membership and the value of 2 on G indicates membership in the treatment group. So those are the two groups that I'm comparing here with regard to the simple factor model. Now, what happens when we run the model like this in M+, what kind of model will we be getting? Is it going to be, for example, a configural invariance model where the parameters of the measurement model can freely vary across groups? Or is that a model that already has certain constraints, certain equality constraints on the parameters? So let's take a look what happens when we set up the model in this way. We can see the model fit of this model looks good. The chi-square test of model fit is not significant. And you can also see that this model has six degrees of freedom. So there must already be some invariance constraints in this model, because otherwise the model would not have so many degrees of freedom. A simple two-factor model with two indicators would have fewer degrees of freedom. So let's take a look at what kinds of group invariance constraints M plus puts into the analysis by default when you set the model up like this. So we can see here that first we get the parameters for the group control. And when we compare those parameters to the group treatment, we will find that the loadings are already set equal by default. The first loading is fixed to one by default in M plus whenever we specify a latent factor, the second loading and other loadings are estimated. And in this case, you can see that the loading here, for example, the second loading on the first factor 0.853 is the same in the treatment group as in as it is in the control group. So there's already an invariance constraint on the loadings by default. And then also M plus places invariance constraints also on the intercepts across groups by default. So those intercepts or additive constants in the measurement model are also automatically the same across all groups. You can see that by comparing those here again. And so why does M plus do that? M plus does this because strong measurement equivalence is a prerequisite for meaningful comparisons of means across groups, latent means. We couldn't really compare the latent means meaningfully if we didn't have invariant loadings and invariant 
intercepts. And so that's why M plus does this. So it assumes that you want a model with strong invariance to begin with because weaker forms of invariance would not allow you to meaningfully compare the means. Now let's take a look at what M plus does. M plus does not constrain the error variances or residual variances in the measurement model by default. So if you want a model with strict invariance, then you have to take action and you have to uh, manually constrain those residual variances to also be equal across groups because M plus does not set them equal. M plus also does not set the factor variances equal. So the variances of F1 and F2 are freely estimated and so are their co so is their covariance. So the covariance also can differ by default across those groups. And then also you can see that M plus by default fixes the latent means to zero in the first group. So the first group in M plus always serves as the reference group where the latent factor means are set to zero. All intercepts are estimated, but they are set equal across groups. And so then as a result, we're able to estimate the latent means in all other groups. And so then we can make comparisons of those latent means relative to group one. So let's take a look at the treatment group two. And there you will find that the means are estimated in that group. And so what that allows us to do is, is to directly compare those means across treatment and control group now, because we know that in the control group, the means are set to zero. And so then this gives us the difference between group two and group one. And so here you can see that the factor mean for F1 in group two is larger. So in the treatment group, we have a larger mean for F1 compared to the control group where the mean is zero. And we can take a look at the p-value here and you will find that it's significant. So this means that the mean of F1 is significantly higher in the treatment group as compared to the control group because it's a test against zero and the mean in the control group is zero. The second mean is negative in the treatment group. This means that that mean is smaller in the treatment group as compared to the control group. However, this is not significant. So you can see here the p-value is greater than 0.05. So at an alpha level of 0.05, this is not a significant mean difference. So we can conclude that group one and group two differ with regard to the F1 latent mean, but they do not differ with regard to the F2 latent mean. So that's what M plus does by default. When you run a multi-group confirmatory factor analysis, it gives you a model with strong measurement equivalence across groups. It holds the loadings and intercepts equal across groups. It does not hold the error variances equal across groups. It also does not constrain the latent variances, covariances, or means. It does set the latent means to zero in group one, the reference group, and then all other means all of the latent means are freely estimated and can be compared relative or can directly be compared to group one because group one is zero and we always get a test against zero for all the other means. So we can always look at contrasts relative to group one. Now, if you want other contrasts or if you want other constraints in the model or if you want to relax constraints, then you'll have to do that manually by setting up group specific statements, for example, in the M plus input file. I hope you found this video useful and please subscribe to this channel. Also check out the description for other videos and workshops and leave a comment in the comment section if you have any comments or suggestions for other topics that I should cover here on this channel. And I'll see you next time.